Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're out here at the Beef Stalker Unit with Dr. Dale Blasey. We're going to talk about starting calves. We're going to talk about research that they do here, their uh, production research, their performance research, health research, and much more. We're here at K-State, and we'll be right back. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of ResFlor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at ResFlorGold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. You can see we're outside today. Beautiful day here, Manhattan, Kansas. We got our good friend and colleague, Dr. Dale Blasey. He's a professor here at Kansas State University in the Department of Animal Sciences and Industry. He's also an extension specialist, and I guarantee if you're part of the beef industry here in the United States, uh, you have seen Dr. Blasey's work, you've listened to him speak, and you've seen it all come from this beautiful uh, unit in which he has been instrumental in building here the Beef Stalker Unit. So welcome to the show, Dr. Dale. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Well, uh, just kind of give us a little background on this place because it's, I mean, if you had never been here, it was it the third, uh, we, you, the Tuesday or Wednesday of Thursday of the month of September that you do your stalker? Yes, uh, we just finished it up uh, just uh, last week, and uh, it was our 24th rendition, and we already got September 26th down for 2024. Yeah, so if you want to go to a great stalker conference in the beautiful Flint Hills of Kansas, come to K-State to the Beef Stalker Unit for their stalker unit days here at uh, K-State, September 26th, 2024. But kind of talk about how you've built this place and what you've kind of, what your vision of, of over the years has been. Well, Dan, initially back in 2003, uh, some changing of properties with our various beef units uh, allowed us the opportunity to basically build a unit uh, designed specifically for backgrounding calves. And with the uh, roughly 1,200 acres of native grass uh, around this entire property that we use for double stocking uh, native, our native grass in May through August, it allowed us an opportunity to focus on uh, constructing some receiving pens for looking at uh, cattle research throughout the year. So today uh, we have 40 pens. Uh, uh, basically we can accommodate five semi loads of calves for every turn that we do. So we have about 500 head of calves that we uh, conduct our, our production oriented work with. And so you have pens that you come in, you start calves in pens, you have uh, stalker or stocking, the ability to go out on the Flint Hills and, and, and graze native pasture, but you really have a way to kind of model all the different segments of the industry here on, on getting that calf from weaning to feedlot. That's correct. And, and we've looked at a variety of different trials that allows us the opportunity to, to leverage having the calves prior to grass and, and basically getting all the pukes out so that we have a cleaner set of calves going to grass so we can do a better job looking at various uh, entomology, uh, burning research. Uh, we've done a variety of, of applications with these calves to fit what our what our producers in this part of the country do. When you cook book it down and you're thinking of the, the producer, you said entomology, but you're doing things on flies, you're doing things on parasites, you're doing things on respiratory disease. Um, and, and now you're even looking at metabolites to enhance the immune system of these lightweight calves, right? Exactly. 
We, we really try to keep our ear to the ground and, and make ourselves aware of whatever's being discussed with our producers out there. We, tr we really try to address questions that are on their minds. It's kind of the land grant mission, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. Sometimes it's been forgotten. But uh, I can tell you here at the Beef Stalker Unit, this is one of those places that if you want to come to a place that's about the students, that's about the stakeholders and the producers, that's about welcoming other faculty members, this this guy and Bill Hollenbeck, the manager, have built a a culture like like no other. So I'm um, really proud of what you've done. Thank you, Dan. So let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to start jumping into some of the different research projects that Dr. Blasey's been doing uh, and some of the results. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're glad you joined us. DNA Dialogue is brought to you by Igenity Beef, powered by Neogen. To me, there are three main benefits of genetic testing. It can be everything as simple as calving ease, weaning weight, heifer pregnancy, stayability, coat color, there's a commercial test for that. Horn pulled would be something similar. These are all traits that matter at the end of the day and they hit the profitability of an operation. Secondly, genomic testing can be used for parentage. One of the biggest benefits of parentage verification is really understanding when we turn bulls out into multi-sire pastures, which ones are doing their job and which ones aren't right? Because no one wants to turn a bull out for him to only have three or four calves a year. But also we can identify sires that are creating the calves that we like the best, that are born earlier. Or maybe we can identify calving issues out of a single sire. So with the parentage, if you run that on all of your calves, then you would have a better understanding of which bulls are creating the calves that you like. Uh, maybe the ones that are born sooner or later that weigh more, um, or even the ones that are underperforming. And lastly, genetic testing can be used to rank replacement heifers for selection that match your breeding objectives and your operations goals, or to even create steers that meet your market. We know how expensive it is to keep and maintain heifers. What is also the fallout of those heifers if they're not the correct ones you're keeping and maintaining? We want to do as much as we can to get it right before we spend the money to impact our herd further down that road and keep successive females out of the wrong type of females. Igenity Beef. Contact your Neogen Territory Manager to test today. Bovalis Nasalgen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovalis Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve, delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dale Blasey. And Dr. Blasey is a professor in the Department of Animal Science and Industry here at Kansas State University. As you can see, we're out here in the beautiful uh, beef stalker unit at Kansas State where Dr. Blasey is the director and, and has a great staff, has great grad students, uh, just a phenomenal opportunity, but let's talk about some of your research. One of the studies that you've done recently over the last few years is looking at aggression of cattle to the bunk and how that relates to health and performance and, and that, correct? That's correct. What set that up and then what'd you find? Well, calves have to eat, especially after a, a traumatic experiences being assembled. Yep. Uh, and certainly the truck ride is, is really can take it out of them. They come in extremely shrunk. And so we got to replenish a lot of that intercellular water. We got to also get the calories in them. Yep. I mean, there's some great work out of Oklahoma State and Texas that talks about the balance between having adequate protein and, of course, the energy, Dan, to help the body uh, mount that immune challenge to, to all the stressors that the veterinarians have to deal with. Yep. So we try to get them set up to get 
to get them recalibrated, if you will. And uh, uh, yes, uh, having, having them hungry uh, is, a, is a great indicator of, of something that's healthy, if you have an appetite. Yep, and so, and I, and I agree, and we always talk about keeping them health uh, aggressive too, because if they're aggressive and they're coming to the bunk, it's easier to find the one that's straggling back behind, maybe that doesn't feel so good, he's not gonna be as aggressive to the bunk, so it helps me find cattle sicker earlier. Absolutely, and and you know, with everything uh, attacking the bunk, uh, being trained very quickly, uh, it makes it much easier for the, the feed driver, the person driving, delivering the feed, they got their eyes out there and they're seeing that animal before there's any human contact that would change the animal's behavior and make it feel like it's feeling better than it really does. So uh, absolutely, uh, the the RA built, um, my RA built Hollenbeck. I mean, he's he's really keen on what we're doing, and uh, we love the approach that we've done. Uh, some of the great work years ago uh, done at Hitch Feeders down there in in Oklahoma near Hooker, uh, talking about limit feeding. Yeah. And so you know, when the calves come in, uh, they get an allotment roughly equal to one percent of their body weight in long stem hay. That just says welcome. You're at a new location, but you can relate to long stem roughage. And immediately the next day, the calves get uh, the complete TMR, the limit fed diet that is comprised of, uh, we're using whole shelled corn, uh, uh, just a smattering of, of, of hay and about 40% co-product. That And it's, it's a nice, beautiful transition. And we get those calves up to the bunk. Yep. So. What have you seen then when the different, because you'd even worked with some artificial intelligence that can the keeping them aggressive be a good tool? Absolutely. Okay. And, and what, we, what we have found after doing nearly probably 10 experiments now is it takes roughly anywhere from five to 10 to 12 days to get the calves up to our targeted intake of about two to 2.2% of their, yep. of, their, of their body weight and dry matter. And we just hold them steady and bump up as they move along. But again, we get them to the bunk. The whole shelled corn, I think, is another ideal key for lightweight calves. We're not dealing with starch and starch can, can really tear up these calves. The unevenness of the intake, getting aggressive, eating too much, and then backing away because they have that that belly ache, that subacute acidosis, that's that's in the background there. So um, it's it's a matter of getting them up, getting them familiarized, getting all of them up, and and we feel like there's a really good outcome from that. That's awesome. All right, folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back. We're going to summarize some more work that Dr. Dale's done here at the Kansas State Beef Stalker Unit. When it comes to treating BRD, you want a product that you can count on to get the job done at an affordable price. Macrosyn by Bimeda delivers on both. A straight shooting, no BS to lathromycin that does what it's supposed to do. End of story. You don't need to take our word for it though. Go to macrosyn.com for customer testimonials and head-to-head -head trial results. For your cattle and your bottom line, choose Macrosyn. In the livestock industry, castration is a common practice to ensure proper herd management. All methods are painful, regardless of the age of the animal. At Solvit, we could not ignore the clear industry need for better castration solutions. So we developed Lidoband, a novel lidocaine impregnated elastrator, addressing the pain associated with band castration. It provides local anesthesia throughout the castration process. Lidoband, a small device that can make a big difference. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dale Blasey and we're at the Kansas State Beef Stalker Unit. Dr. Blasey um, is the director of this unit, has built this unit, has a wonderful Beef Stalker Day that's in September. September 26, 2024 will be your 25th 
annual. anniversary. And so you need to be here. It's an unbelievable event. Just great fellowship, lots of great cattle producers that attend that. When we're talking about aggressiveness to the bunk, you've also done some bunk space research. Right. And, and you know, Dr. Dan, when you limit feed, if you go back to the literature, there's the concern, at least at the time, was making sure you have sufficient space for these calves when you limit feed them. Yep. Uh, if you squeeze them out too much, perhaps they don't, don't get their fair allotment. So we embarked on, a, on two studies that have been completed looking at bunk space. Our, our first study, we went down to 10 inches per head and saw no significant difference in intake. And we took it a step further and went down to six inches. Okay. Same situation. We saw no significant difference uh, in gain, no difference in variation in gain. We weren't growing the bigger cattle, more aggressive eaters, growing further apart from their pen mates. We kept things very consistent, very uniform. And it all comes back to investment in bunk space and apron and the 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 steel to to maintain these calves and for a young person a young producer looking to get into the business trying to make as much as he or she has to work with uh we feel really good about the limit feeding and going as far down as six inches to to meet their the calves needs and you know when you when you start to think about it and we were having some discussions about you know what this feeding technology look like in the future it has always amazed me that you can walk into a pig building, right? And here's this feeder that's this, you know, this long for the pen. And it's automatically fed. And those pigs train themselves to use it and share it and, and that. And, and I wonder sometimes if, if maybe in the future of the cattle business. Exactly. That, you know, maybe we haven't given our cattle enough credit to be able to train themselves and take turns and learn that, you know, one of the big things too is the anxiety of making sure there's gonna be enough, right? Right. And if you can relieve them of that anxiety, the cattle, that they know that, hey, if I let my buddy take their turn, there's plenty for me, I'll just go second. Exactly. It just fits well for us uh, when we experience a weather event. Uh, typically, uh, what is provided to the calves in the morning is cleaned up within six hours. So we got stripped out bunks. The remainder of the day, the calves are content. They're laying down, they're, they're ruminating. Uh, and if there's a snowstorm or any rain event, we have no bunks to scoop. Right. We don't have any of that. And, and for a lot of producers that are farming as well, they feed in the morning and they're, they're able to do their harvesting and, and they just need to stay up on their weights as they're allotting these calves as they're growing to make sure they're meeting their dry matter requirements. Well, it decreases the bunk management. Uh, it, decre it helps you find the calves that are sick better, easier. And, and, and like you said, if you're in, if you're farming, you won't come in and chore in the morning and you won't be able to go get, get out in the. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. And oh, roughage, man. roughage is really a millstone in, in a, a starting pen environment. It's something you got to worry about during drought. You got to compete with everybody to get it in. You have to grind it. Uh, you, you produce a lot more manure. Uh, it, it's a real millstone ar around a person's neck. And, it, it just, it's a beautiful system. Uh, the cattle, uh, the manure production is cut by about 45%. Yeah. And for keeping paint, uh, pens in maintenance and everything, it, it really does, it does pay out all the way around. That's great. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up with a final segment here with Dr. Dale Blasey. We're at the Kansas State Beef Stalker Unit. Thanks for joining us. The cost of an open cow these days is very expensive. It's hard at times to dedicate a half a day or a whole day to leave your practice to go palpate cows. And so Alertus Test has helped speed the process up of getting preg rates back to the owners. And so free up time for diagnostics or working in your clinic, it also will help generate revenue not being on site to do the testing. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, 
Feed it with a tube or a nipple and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Dale Blasey. Dr. Blasey has been a friend and colleague for, for decades and uh, just does a tremendous job here at Kansas State University. He's a professor, he's an extension specialist, and if you've been at NCBA, if you've been at uh, any of the Plains Nutrition Council and out around the state of Kansas or anywhere in the U.S. and you talk about stalker cattle, this guy's name comes up uh, first and foremost. And um, thanks for all that you do. You do a lot, man. You work your tail off and, it, and appreciate the it. Best job in the world, Dan. Yeah, you, well, you do the best job in the world. And um, so anyway, we're uh, here and, and we're talking about some of the things you've done in the past, but let's, it's kind of exciting what you're working on right now. Well, you know, we all uh, experienced COVID and one thing that came out of the COVID experience for me personally was to become more aware of the importance of vitamins, specifically vitamin D, and some human studies that showed the intense correlation between people in rest homes having low serum vitamin D levels and the occurrence of, of the upper respiratory issues that they deal, deal with. And, and sun in and of itself is, is good. It's one of the means by which we meet our vitamin D requirements, Dan, but having the circulating uh, serum uh, levels necessary to help the body mount an, an immune response is, is um, it's, it's tremendous. Yeah, so, so taking that, and we've learned something about vitamins, minerals, different things, you're looking at the ability of vitamin D then to correlate to improve cattle health? Yes, sir. And we started off with a, a baseline project back in March. We uh, loaded up a hundred head of heifers out of Dixon, Tennessee, bled them before they got on the truck, got them here to the stalker unit and started bleed, uh, a bleed at day zero, day 15, uh, 30, Five, and then finally at day 60, and we, we were able to track the circulating levels of this activated vitamin D called 25-hydroxy. And again, if you go to the, the literature, especially on the dairy side, Dan, it's, it's amazing what vitamin D does in terms of, of teat health, uh, minimizing mastitis. There's just so many things that are seen on the swine and especially the poultry side with the administration of vitamin D. And so we started a project, the calves we have here today uh, arrived last week, two more loads come in this week, and we're gonna follow the health of these calves looking at vitamin D3 in the feed by itself, and then at a half milligram and a milligram per day of the vitamin, uh, the hydroxy, uh, vitamin D, and then we're gonna look at a combination vitamin A with the hydroxy as well. And we're gonna look at all the cytokine measures. We're gonna look at all the, the various titers. Uh, we're gonna really try to put a picture together of, of what this vitamin, basically it's, it's a hormone yeah. by the time it's converted within the body. There are cells in the body, every cell in the body has a receptor for vitamin D. And uh, it really is understudied and it's something that as a population, we, tr we talk about going natural. This is something that really needs to be evaluated totally. Well, I think that that's the other thing that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and you said this in the beginning, you take questions to get the answers because farmers and ranchers depend upon it from, from a land grant institution. Absolutely. Uh, we got to look at these things and, we, you know, whatever turns out from this project will be, will be reported, but I think we'll be further down the road knowing more and understanding better about this particular vitamin. Well, if you can't get excited uh, watching this show and seeing all that they're doing here at the Beef Stalker Unit, it's pretty hard to get excited about anything. <laughs> and just really appreciate you taking time out to spend with us today, and we're, we're going to be back. And, Thank and you, we'll Dan. be at the Stalker uh, Day in September, September 26, 2024. Mark your calendar, come into Manhattan, Kansas, uh, go on the website, get registered. We'll see you there. Um, 
Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. It's been a great pleasure. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to find us at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Dale Blasey, and we'll see you down the road. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. From sunrise feeding to midnight calving, it's planning and prepping every last detail so your family can enjoy the finer things in life. It's careful feeding, impeccable breeding, and herd health protocols to keep your slice of the industry forging ahead. More than just a website or print catalog, we're a dedicated partner with everything you need right when you need it. ValleyVet.com